We all have stories. Some cause us to pause and think about the challenges that we face, whilst others cause us to reflect on the best of who we are and who we can be. Today, I, along with the government of Bermuda, look to continue the story of improving healthcare outcomes and making healthcare access a reality to all in Bermuda. Imagine a Bermuda in which all people can have access to the services that they require in order to stay healthy or to improve upon their health without suffering financial hardships. Imagine reading a story where we ensure that more people, more costs, and more services are all covered. So today, we embark upon the creation of a whole new affordable plan for better care and better health care outcomes. We look forward to writing these next chapters with you because this is our story and I want us all to write these next chapters together. Good morning all, thank you very much for joining me. The cost of health care is causing real hardship to many families. We have all heard the stories. The story of the families who have been driven into debt because their insurance coverage ran out or because they were uninsured to begin with. The story of the unemployed Bermudians, unable to afford health insurance, relying on hope and prayers that they do not get sick until they find a new job that will provide them with health coverage. The story of the seniors who had to choose between medication and food. The story of the young mother who had to choose between paying for childcare or insurance. The story of the parent who has denied their own medical needs in order to ensure that their children's health needs are covered. The story of our neighbors, our colleagues, or our school friends who came down with an unexpected illness, was left with mounting medical bills, forced to fund their health care with bake sales, community fundraisers, and GoFundMe pages. The story of the health care professional who was forced to try and figure out how to provide help to patients who cannot afford the tests, medicine, or other treatments that they need. Today, our healthcare system is too expensive, and Bermudian families are struggling to survive. And we were elected to change that. Today, we begin the next step on our journey as a people towards a new healthcare system that will help Bermuda become healthier and reduce the cost of healthcare, thereby making it more affordable and accessible for all. I believe that as a society, we will be measured by the way we treat our weakest members. Inequitable access to health care should not exist in such a wealthy society like ours. Access to quality and affordable health care is a human right, a universal human right. And unfortunately, inequitable access is what we have. That inequity impacts all of us negatively, and we are all paying for it dearly. We all pay for care that comes too late when it is most expensive. And we pay in societal cost when a family is left without a breadwinner who succumbs to a treatable illness that was detected too late because they lacked insurance. We pay for years of productive lives lost due to unmanaged chronic diseases that lead to amputation, permanent disability, or daily reliance on complex, costly technologies like dialysis. We pay in unnecessary pain and suffering for children who lose parents. So today, as we begin to break down inequity and create a fairer, better, more affordable healthcare system, there are some key takeaways that I must feel, that I feel must be emphasized. Government wants to make sure that everyone can be healthier. The country needs more prevention and access to health care for all. We want to make sure that the basic health insurance plan includes the essentials to keep Bermudians healthy and catch treatable illnesses early. And we have to make sure that the new basic essential health plan is affordable to all and available to all. Therefore, today, I am announcing the government's decision to fundamentally reform the basic health insurance plan and to provide it through a unified system where all residents will be a part of the basic Bermuda Health Plan. More importantly, a new essential benefits package will be designed to help make us healthier and result in real savings to Bermudians by placing caps on co-payments whilst ensuring healthcare businesses can be financially stable. The government is committed to reforming health care to make it more affordable, expand access, and improve health outcomes. 
This is a journey. No single step is going to get us everything at once. But changing the way we pay for health care is fundamental to making sure that everyone can access it. We believe every Bermudian should have better access to services like regular doctor's visits, primary care, and essential medication. Therefore, it is clear that Bermuda's basic health insurance plan needs to include more than what is currently covered by the standard health benefit, which does not include doctor's visits, prescription drugs, overseas care, dental, or vision care. The Bermuda Health Plan 2020 is how we will provide better coverage. This journey is one that we believe you must be able to participate in, share your views, and let your voices be heard. We want the input of the community, doctors, nurses, employers, insurers, the business sector, everyone to decide what the Bermuda Health Plan should include. We have put together a draft package to open the public dialogue and consultation on what the Bermuda Health Plan should look like. Your ideas, suggestions, and contributions will help us to shape to expand basic health coverage to give you more than what you are getting today for less costs overall. The new plan we have drafted for public consultation includes doctors access, excuse me, access to doctors and specialist care, home care services, and basic coverage for medicines, dental, vision, and overseas care. Coverage for screening, early intervention, and proper management of chronic diseases can prevent conditions like asthma and diabetes from worsening and becoming debilitating and expensive. We estimate that the Bermuda Health Plan could be provided for $514 a month for an adult and $178 for children. This would be $257 each when shared between employer and employee. It would replace the SHB, the Standard Health Benefit, and therefore includes everything that's already contained in the Standard Health Benefits as well. Most importantly, this mock basic plan is designed to help make us healthier and results in real savings to individuals because it proposes caps on co-payments while ensuring healthcare businesses can be financially stable. I'm so very excited about the national dialogue we are about to embark on to improve the basic insurance plan and create the Bermuda Health Plan 2020. In addition, the government consulted previously on how our country should organize the financing of health care, and the two options were considered in quite detail. And I'm grateful to the Health Financing Reform Stakeholder Consultation Group, who provided the perspectives of a full range of community stakeholders to inform the government's decision on how Bermuda should finance health care in the future. We have determined that the Bermuda Health Plan should be provided by a unified system as this is best suited to achieve efficiencies, economies of scale, and cost savings given Bermuda's small size. A unified system means that all residents will be in the same basic insurance pool, sharing health costs throughout all of Bermuda's residents. Of course, the Bermuda Health Plan will not be everything to everyone. And we welcome the important role private insurers play in providing supplemental benefits above and beyond what a basic package will offer. However, this government's intent is that the Bermuda Health Plan should aim to cover essential services that we need. I want to remind us also that this is all about containing health care costs as well. Making us healthier as a community and as individuals is a necessary part of containing health costs. But there are other drivers that we have to tackle as well. In discussing how to get Bermuda to a unified system providing a Bermuda Health Plan, we will have to tackle other difficult issues that drive health costs, such as fee levels, co-pays, and utilization. With good lifestyle choices, proper treatment, and investment in ourselves, we can all age healthier. We can have better quality of life and prevent our health costs from continuing to escalate. We are addressing the goal of making Bermuda healthier from a lot of different angles. We are making healthier environments through initiatives like the sugar tax. We are educating our children and our students on nutrition and healthy living through the Healthy Schools program. We are promoting screenings and vaccinations as the most fundamental preventable measures. We want to ensure that everyone has affordable access to essential services through a Bermuda Health Plan. 
and we're inviting every sector of the public to be a part of this transformation to make Bermuda healthier. So if today is another step forward, what happens next? Dialogue, consultation, and building consensus on how to get us to achieve affordable health care for all. Over the coming weeks, we will be releasing consultation documents on the Bermuda Health Plan 2020 and starting a four-month period of consultation on what Bermuda's basic health insurance plan should look like and include. Is $514 affordable? Should dental be included? What level of overseas care? How should co-pays be capped? We have a lot to decide together. How should our current fragmented and expensive health financing system be transitioned into a more efficient health financing system? How should a unified system work in Bermuda? Who should administer the plan, the government or the private sector? How will the plan interact with existing private insurers? Who should benefit from subsidized premiums? Again, there's a great deal of discussion to be had in order to develop together a roadmap to health care for all. Over the next few months, I look forward to working with stakeholders, including our global insurance sector, who have offered their assistance to ensure that Bermuda's system of health insurance is the best in the world. We are the world's risk capital, and with their assistance and expertise, I'm confident that following this period of consultation, we will emerge with a clear vision on the future of Bermuda's health care system. This is transforma transformative change, and we intend to do it openly through consultation and dialogue. But before I close, I must caution Bermuda. There will be members of our community who will be content with the status quo, not wishing to advance the reform measures I've just spoken about, and think that the fundamentals of our health care system, which has been in place for the last 50 years, should continue. This government does not agree. In July 2017, this government received an overwhelming mandate for change. And based on the stories this government is hearing from the community, we know that Bermudians are not status with the status quo that is hurting so many of our people. Ultimately, this is about our health, about your newborn baby's health, about your grandmother's health. It's about the well-being of every young person and parent in the country, and about our need to look after each other, because in my Bermuda, we are all each other's keepers. Imagine with me a Bermuda that provides access to health care at a price that is affordable within a system which is sustainable. Together, I am certain that we will achieve more affordable health care for all of Bermuda and her people. I look forward to writing these next chapters with you because this is the health care that we all deserve. Thank you. Um, if anybody wants any further information, I invite you to look at the website of www.com, excuse me, .gov, .bm, backwards slash health care, health plan. And you can get further information and details concerning the consultation period as well. Thank you. Members of the meeting, do you have any questions? Paul? Jasmine? Actually, good morning. Good morning. Um, there's a lot to digest. Okay. Uh, the Bermuda Health Plan 2020, uh, subject to the consultation and what the benefits package will include in that plan, will actually replace the standard health benefit. So effectively, we have a standard health benefit that has very little prevention. In fact, almost 95% of the standard health benefit, the benefits included in that go to inpatient, outpatient care with no prevention. We recognize that unfortunately Bermuda has very high instances of chronic non-communicable diseases. We are very unhealthy and we're living longer um, as well. So we need to look at a benefit package that includes uh, preventative measures, right? The World Health Organization has indicated there are certain essential benefits that should be contained in a basic plan. And those essential benefits include things like prevention, doctor's visits, and so forth. So the standard health benefit, which as I indicated, offers very little, if any, prevention, there's a small amount included in that for diagnostic imaging, will be replaced with this Bermuda Health Plan 2020 that will focus on case management and prevention. Uh, and it will include the existing benefits of the SHB. 
Okay. Uh, so you propose it's been proposed that uh, this plan, uh, this package, would cost some five hundred dollars uh, per month for adults. Um, due to the fact that it's a lower fee, you know, where are we going to be generating the money to fund that? It will, the, the, the plan will be funded through premiums. Um, however, I think one important thing to note is that uh, when you look at the, the plan, the, and again, it's like based on a 541 plan, when you compare that, for example, to HIP, and persons might say, well, my HIP uh, premium is $84 less than that plan. Well, in addition to HIP having less benefits, such as uh, no medication, et cetera. This plan will have more benefits, but it will also be more cost effective for the consumer in the long run because what people don't realize is that HIP is heavily subsidized. Every uh, person that pays for insurance pays $35 a month towards the HIP. So even though HIP is $480 something dollars per month, it actually costs over $600, $610 per month with respect to the provision of services. Again, because it's heavily subsidized by taxpayers as well as individual policyholders. And just lastly, um, it's been said that you know, this government's policies are, are killing you know, the private sector, small businesses, sugar tax costs, uh, certain businesses to close. Uh, now there's a potential cap on copay for doctor's visits. You know, um, that may threaten their bottom line as well. You know, what would you say to that? Well, I think that, um, I don't want to answer the question with a question, but I suspect that if you did a poll of the majority of Bermudians, their number one concern as it relates to health care costs is their inability to go to a physician because there is no regulation with respect to the copays, and they may go to a physician and have a very high copay or an anticipation of having that high copay, decide not to go to the physician where they could have an illness that could have been preventable. They delay going to the doctor until such a time where they end up in hospital with perhaps a diagnosis that could have been treated earlier had they had an opportunity to go to a physician at a more contained cost for the copay. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so it's, I just want to keep things very general. Um, so like, am I correct that the Bermuda Health Plan then is going to be replacing the standard health plan? You're correct, Paul. But it will still include, contain the uh, benefits that are already covered under the standard health benefit. Like I said, approximately 95% of the standard health benefit is for inpatient and outpatient procedures. So that the, the Bermuda Health Plan 2020 will enhance what already exists under the standard health plan, but it will, like you say, replace it. Uh, in your uh, statement, you said that who um, would administer the plan, uh, government or private sector, still has not been decided. That's part of the consultation process. Part of the consultation process is twofold. One, it will be to decide what does that Bermuda Health Plan 2020 look like? What type of benefits should be included in that? And the second part of the consultation will include the development of a roadmap as to how we will effectively transition our health financing from the current disjointed expensive methodology towards a unified system. So part of that discussion will include the roadmap who will be pr the provider for that, et cetera. That will be all form part of the consultation and the roadmap for transitioning. And are the only two options being considered government or private sector? Is there a quango option being considered? Again, that, those are two illustrations, but part of the, 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 the consultation period will assist in um, thrashing that out. Is there, at this point, a preferred, would you prefer if this is a quango or controlled by private sector rather than government? This would seem to be a massive undertaking for government to take on? Um, like I said, the consultation period will, uh, will allow members of the public uh, and, and, and private sector to participate in this process. It's very important that they uh, fully are engaged. No decisions are final, and we need to ensure that persons are part of the process and provide the consultation and the discussion, because it's very critical. This affects each and every one of us, and we need to be um, informed as well as participants, active participants in this process. You mentioned, or, or you mentioned consultation. Um, what consultation has taken place to date with the health insurance providers? The, um, uh, under the 
charge of the Bermuda Health Council. They have been intimately involved with consultation with not only uh, the medical uh, profession, but also the health insurance providers with respect to this process. In fact, the stakeholder consultation group that I mentioned previously who assisted uh, the government in so far as making a decision as to whether we adopt a unified or a dual methodology were actually at the table. They were part of the consultation group. So they were representative of that consultation group and were able to provide their feedback, feedback excuse me, with respect to the process. Can you tell me then a little bit, what was the feedback from A, health insurance providers about this uh, change, and B, from health care Okay, that's a very good question, and it brings me to another point. I don't have all of the details. However, um, later on today, or in due course, we are going to publicize everything, and the stakeholder consultation document, the report that I received last November, will be on the website that I referred to previously. So you'll, I invite you to go ahead and read through it very carefully, because it will have all the comments and the submissions made by the respective organizations. Can you speak generally to what the feedback you heard from the uh, There's been a lot of pushback Generally, um, there were uh, some individual uh, stakeholders, there were I think 14 stakeholders, so it wasn't just the insurance companies, we represented charities, unions and the like. But of the, uh, and I'm going by memory, there were um, a, a number of persons, uh, sorry, stakeholder groups that did suggest that they wished, that they felt that the option of unified was preferred. There were a number of organizations that uh, preferred the dual. There were other organizations that may have identified one particular option, but in the synopsis, we're actually referring to another option. And then there was perhaps one or two that had no preference. But again, I invite you to www.gov.bm forward, forward slash health plan and the full report of the stakeholder consultation group will be published. Uh, I just have a couple more questions. Sure. Um, if a private insurer is chosen to administer this plan, presumably that would mean that other insurance providers uh, have a lot less money coming in. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate that this will have a knock-on effect as far as what individuals pay for health insurance provisions if a single private entity is chosen to administer this? Okay, there's two ways to answer that. The first way is that with respect to whether or not it's a private a company that, uh, whoever is the provider of the Bermuda Health Plan 2020, the provision of the service that they will be providing is simply that standard package. There will always be a need for other insurance companies to continue offering supplemental insurance. So for example, the standard package will include some of the things that I spoke about, but somebody may decide, I would like to have an executive physical in New York every six months. I need to have supplemental insurance uh, to cover that. So the insurance companies will always be needed to provide supplemental benefits. This is the basic insurance packet that every insurance uh, that will be offered to everybody in Bermuda. Um, in the conclusion, I guess, to your prepared remarks, um, you said you must caution for meetings. There will be members of our community who will be content with the status quo. Mm -hmm. um, who, who would be against this change? This is presumably about making health care costs lower for all. Mm -hmm. Who is going to be concerned about this? Who is paying more and who is paying less? Um, I'm, I'm going to answer that by quoting you. This is certainly the objective is to make sure that uh, we have a society that has better health, out, health care outcomes. We have a society that can afford to have the type of insurance and health care that they require and that it will be accessible to all. Um, it is with any new reform comes noise. And it is very likely that we will hear persons or members of the community or organizations concerned about the change, right? Change can be very, very difficult. But because of those difficult situations doesn't mean that we don't change. Reform is necessary. And we have a situation that has in, uh, been in operation for over 50 years. And it's not serving all members of our sect, all sectors of our society. So we need to reform it to ensure, like I said, that we have better health outcomes, we have access to health care for everyone, and it is affordable. Those concerns reigns, though, are going to be because certain people are paying more? Um, as I spoke about previously with respect to the uh, Bermuda Health Plan, that plan will have a number of uh, 
further preventative measures that will be contained in the health plan insofar as whether or not people are going to be paying more when you compare that health plan again to the uh, to the HIP plan like I spoke about previously, it, there are more benefits. So if we have a situation where you're paying for an insurance premium, however, you have a cap on what your copay is, then there are going to be overall savings to the individual. If we have a situation where a benefit package includes medication where heretofore wasn't included, there's going to be overall savings to the individuals, which ties back into the government's objective of making sure that health care costs are available and affordable to all. I'm not trying to drain it out. I just want to know, the members of the community who will not be happy about this, what is it specifically that they will not be happy about? I'm, I, I made that comment simply because whenever there is reform and whenever there is change, people are resistant to change. So I can anticipate without looking in a crystal ball that if we change a system that has systemically disserviced a large segment of our population for over 50 years, that there are going to likely be detractors. And all I'm saying is, wait for the space. Paul, I just want my question. Do you have the value of the standard health benefits of this I do not. Um, that's information that we can get to. I don't have that. At my, I can say that the stand, the health, the the premium is three fifty five thirty one, but I don't know the exact uh, amount in that fund. Uh, yes. Minister, whoever subscribes to government or to the private sector, will every insured person be taking part in this plan? That's a very good question. Thank you. This will be offered to everyone in Bermuda. So whether you have government insurance or whether you have private insurance, this will now be the basic insurance package. So just like the standard health benefit, which is required under law for every insurance policy that's written to include the standard health benefit, this will replace the standard health benefit. So it will be a requirement, but it will be offered um, in a unified model for every Bermudian or every, I'm sorry, every Bermudian and every resident. So it will be offered to everyone, that's correct. Is there a possibility that government might introduce a supplementary package that members of the public can subscribe to the government instead of using the public sector? That is, again, that's open to consultation. Those are, those are um, things to be considered and that we'll have those discussions as well um, insofar as because, like I said, this is a package that will be required and, and everybody will be able to buy into it, whether or not government decides, and, and it's a matter of costing, whether or not they decide that we're going to also offer a supplemental because perhaps um, those are part of discussions, those are ongoing discussions.